how ISO affects your settings and the quality of your shot. Okay, let's start with quality. When shooting with high ISOs, your, nor your image is going to be more grainy or noisy. And when using low ISOs, which is normally desired, you're going to have a cleaner image. However, sometimes we need to shoot with high ISOs in order to get the shot. Most cameras can easily shoot 800 ISO and still look good when enlarged to an 8x10. But how do you know when to change your ISO? And to what? And how is it going to affect your other settings? Well, let's take a look. Let's start with the ISO. This is a Canon 5D Mark III, but it's very similar to other Canon models. Press the ISO on top, change the wheel on top until you have the desired ISO. Then you can hit the set or the shutter button halfway to confirm. Normally you'll want to start with lower ISO, such as 100. I'm starting with 100 because it's the finest grain image, meaning it's going to enlarge the cleanest. However, I may need to increase my ISO depending on the other settings. So for shooting in this room, my exposure says it's a little bright, but I actually need a faster shutter speed because I want to stop motion. I want to stop motion of people walking around, just in the posing situation scenario. And I want to open this right up to give you a good exposure again, but I'm at 1.8, which in my opinion is a little too uh, wide open because it's going to blur out the background and even part of the subject. So I want to be shooting maybe around f4. This tells me my ISO is too low. So I'm going to hit the ISO button, change that up to about 400, and see what I get. Something that will give me an accurate exposure. Perfect. Now there are many things that can affect the settings you choose. For instance, your focal length. The longer the lens, usually the higher the shutter speed needs to be to accommodate any camera shake from holding it in your hands. And also the amount of light in the room, the amount of action in the room, these will adjust. Uh, you'll want to be adjusting your settings, shutter speed and aperture to accommodate those. When you have an idea of what your shutter speed and aperture should be, that's where your ISO is going to come into play. You're going to move it from 100 up to whatever it needs to be to accommodate those settings. And then say your settings uh, are always giving you a very sharp picture, clean and solid. Your shutter speed may even be a little too high. You might be able to um, slow it down and you can change your ISO. Say it was you had to move it up to 800, say you can move it down to 400 um, just to give you a bit of a cleaner image. Or vice versa, you might find you're still needing to increase that shutter speed and you need more light. So you have to go from 800 to 1600. Bottom line is, every time you're in a different situation, you'll need to take a few test shots just to play with your settings and see what you're comfortable with. And as far as different cameras go, you'll need to make sure that you're comfortable with using certain ISOs. So maybe take your camera out and take some test shots using the different uh, ISOs, 400, 800, 16, 32, and above, and just see, even maybe print them right out and see how do those results come out and where will you be satisfied. Sometimes people get an idea they always want to shoot on a low ISO, but their camera can easily handle 3200 ISO for any kind of results that they're going to be happy with. I'm Jason Babakayev. I hope you've learned something, and thanks for watching.